My family has been on this 24 acre farm since 1972. Our land has namely been used for hay that's growing grass and alfalfa to help feed cows and horses in the area. So that doesn't really pay the bills. So we were looking for something else to do. Back in 2017, there was either the option of just continuing forward and not doing anything on our land. Doing good, Mom. Yeah. Or trying to move forward to see if we could encourage change here in Boulder County. Agrivoltaics is just this mashup of agriculture and photovoltaics, which is a fancy word for solar panels. We're literally producing food underneath the shade of solar panels overhead. Just putting up the solar arrays does create a whole new microclimate. Out here in the sun, we dial back the temperature stress by letting the plants grow in the shade of panels overhead. And so if we irrigate the crops, in a shady environment versus irrigate crops in an open sun environment like traditional agriculture, the water stays there longer. That means it has more time to keep that plant healthy and alive. And so we can be better stewards of those water resources. The first problem we were solving when I came at this was challenges with renewable energy production. At the same time, we want to produce food out here in the West. Water resources are becoming more scarce. We're starting to see more variable amounts of rain each year. And so that means water is not something we can always count on. And again, the idea of growing plants in the shade of a solar array makes them less water dependent. But one of the big differences in an agrivoltaic setting is just how big the leaves can get. Plants in a shadier environment like an agrivoltaic setting tend to spread out to capture more sunlight, which makes for a bigger leaf. As you can see in our agrivoltaics leaf versus a leaf from the control setting out in a traditional growing environment. And that's great because we're harvesting leaves for food, you want a larger plant. What I try to explain to folks is we're trying to forecast what the future is going to hold. If we have really good predictions that it's gonna get hotter, we have really good predictions that you're gonna go through periods of drought, even if it's just you know a week of drought, a week of drought is plenty for crops. Anybody who's done gardening knows that if you shut off the water for a week, you're gonna have a problem. And so we're thinking about what are some solutions for a more sustainable food and energy system, you know, 10 years out, 50 years out, 100 years out, where the climate pressures are just turned up to 11, they're turned up a notch. We found that just putting rooftop solar is not enough to offset our needs. And so you have to start to move solar into larger chunks. And it costs quite a bit to move energy around. And so you don't want to put it out in complete nowhere. So a lot of times you'll just push it to those city edges. And what is in that peri-urban edge around the city? That's where our historic farms are. Jack Solar Garden is the first of its kind. There aren't other agrivoltaic projects in the country that are quite like ours, where we'll have five acres of solar panels growing a wide variety of different types of crops. So construction of Jack Solar Garden will be concluded in September of this year. And then it would be the spring of 2021 that we would plan on starting planting crops. There will be areas where we're training young farmers on how to do agrivoltaic so that we can create a new vocation to send young farmers off to other solar arrays in the area. A large intention of what we're doing here is trying to get others to replicate this. And we need the next generation to understand how to do it. <laughs>